Welcome back to the channel. For the first video of 2021, we're back in the topic of CMake, looking at fine package again. Let's get started. You just gotta create a branch and get on with it. So at the end of last year, I did a video on fine package basics in CMake. So you can go and find in this playlist for this series, uh, go find that video and watch it. And in that video, we looked at the consumption side of packages. So if you want to use a, a project's exported targets, uh, you go look for a config. That's what find package looks for. In this video, we're going to look at the other side of that. We're going to create a config for downstream projects to use your exported targets. And there's multiple scenarios we find ourselves in in making CMake package configs. So this one, uh, this video is going to start with looking at header only libraries and just get us our feet wet with that. And then a future video will look into more details. So let's get started. So we're going to dive straight into an example. Now this project I have here is called Tiny TS or Tiny Tasking System. Uh, it's a little header only library to do some quick parallel forwards with. Um, it, when I decide to put this on GitHub, uh, if you need serious a serious solution to parallelism, go use TBB or OpenMP or something that's much more fully featured. I did this just for fun. But the CMake itself uh, might be a good example to look at a simple header-only library uh, CMake config. Um, so let, let's back up though a little bit. What are we trying to accomplish? This one line here, find package tiny TS, is what we're trying to enable. And so uh, writing a config for this, even though it's not a library that's shared or um, or static that has like a library file that needs to be linked on the command line, uh, we can still uh, treat a header-only library um, like a normal package. And so uh, we're trying to make find package tiny TS work. Now I have it hard-coded here to point to the, the config that's in the repo. This is obviously something that would come from the environment in a project outside of this, um, but the rest of it is exactly how everyone else would consume TinyTS. Um, so do a find package, then we get a target. So let's go see how that target gets made. So here in the config, uh, not very long. Uh, I'm gonna talk through each of the pieces here that, that come together to make this happen. And uh, uh, gonna bounce around a little bit but hopefully it makes sense so the first thing to note is we're creating an interface library a header only library makes sense for it to be interface um, because we're only going to get paths to include files uh, and then maybe some uh, maybe some properties to to link but that's it notice that it's imported uh, i'll let you go look at the documentation to add library to see why uh, the imported uh, flag needs to be set here and what that does, uh, but it's important when you're exporting a target uh, for someone else to to consume in a config like this, uh, make sure it's an imported target. It should be the same thing would be true uh, if you were writing a local module to go find something, uh, but that's another video for another day. So once this library exists, uh, you'll notice it's got the imported library naming convention. Uh, with his namespace like syntax it's not quite as mechanical as namespaces in c++ but um, that's what that that's why that is that way uh, that we get this one target it's tiny ts target uh, and we attach some things to it so target include directories uh, just attaches the the path to where we find the header makes sense and then um, i'm bumped down to here with target compile features i wrote this um, using some C++ 14 features, even though C++ threads um, come in to being with C++ 11. Uh, but here, uh, target compile features expresses, hey, this target needs these features, and then this feature is at least C++ 14. Um, so, you know, if someone links TinyTS as a target, CMake makes sure that it's at least C++ 14 makes it onto the command line uh, for people consuming TinyTS. This target link libraries uh, is interesting because it's attached to find dependency. Um, so because this is a tasking system library, uh, need the underlying system uh, platform threading library. So like on, on Linux here, so it would be pthreads. That needs to be added to the link line when consuming TinyTS. I've just used the standard CMake threads target that comes through find package threads. Um, there's a module that CMake ships with, um, the, the threads module. But this find dependency thing is, is kind of quirky. It's specific to configs and modules. 
Um, so the way this works is you'll note that here in this find package called that I marked it as required. And so what that means is if, if tiny TS cannot be found, CMake fails to configure at this find package line. So that means the calling package or, or the calling uh, project uh, fails to configure properly if, if tiny TS cannot be found. So what find dependency does is it respects that. So find dependency says, hey, uh, it is find package, it's wrapping find package. Um, but if uh, the, the call to find package tiny TS was marked required, then this is would mark uh, not the, if you don't find threads, that it would make the find package tiny TS fatal. But other than find, uh, find package being required, there's also find package quiet, uh, and if quiet specified, this will also respect quiet. And that's it. It's really just find package with those extra uh, bonus features. So you get it with, by including the standard file from CMake, and then this macro comes into being. So that's all that's doing. Uh, you'll notice uh, with, with find package quiet, um, I'm going to show you this, that I think it's important that a config say, hey, you found me, and here's where you found me. That's really useful as a developer of someone consuming someone else's config. So I'll show you what this means. When I run CMake, I get this little message. Hey, we found TinyTS, of course. On this root CMake list, if I were to say quiet, what we want is for that message to not show up. Because quiet really means that nothing in the config um, shows up on, on the output lines. Um, and so the way we do that is with a predefined variable that CMake defines. Um, I'm going to have some B-roll up here right now uh, to show you the documentation for where this is listed. Uh, it's in the documentation for find package. Um, but this is a variable that find package tiny TS. Um, if quiet was specified, then this variable is defined. Um, so if, if we are not defined to be quiet, we're free to, to message out, um, hey, we we found tiny TS. Um, the last thing to mention is that uh, in a config, you can act, every time find package executes. Um, so if we were to, I'm going to go ahead and remove quiet here. If I were to do this again, um, what ends up happening is that config gets executed more than once. But what we want to do is make sure that we don't define this interface library target more than once. So if we didn't return out, exit out early, um, if this was already defined, we end up getting an error on the second call to find package tiny TS. Uh, and so that's that's all this is, is, hey, if we know we've executed this config already, let's go ahead and not do it again. Um, because in, in some CMake projects, it's definitely possible to find package maybe in two different subdirectories or somehow <laughs> in fairly complicated, maybe messy CMake lists that a find package to the same thing can happen twice. Um, so we want to make sure that that's not uh, a fatal error because it's not really a problem. We can we can find it twice. Okay, so that's a very simple header only config. Uh, it, it does all we need it to do. But let's jump over to another example. It's a little bit more involved. And uh, it's for a project that I found really handy um, over the years called NanoRT. It's a little uh, ring intersection library, it's header only, and uh, it, it's nice to have around if you, if maybe you don't want to deal with one of the, the larger, heavier weight um, ray intersection libraries that are out there. Um, there are some really nice ones out there, like like Embry and Optics, but um, this is nice and convenient when you just want something quick. And so NanoRT, header only library, uh, I decided to write a config. I'm, put this up in a pull request on GitHub, um, and hopefully the project takes it, but I wrote a config um, for it because there's, not only we want a config to be able to link NanoRT with a CMake target, but it's also good because uh, there's multiple um, backends that you can use with NanoRT, and this config expresses each one of those backends as a target, and then one target as a convenience um, to kind of use the best one that you can. So. Uh, it's a little bit longer. We're going to talk through it. It's not that bad. Um, so some similar things to TinyTS, like, hey, we don't want to accidentally find, or we don't want to accidentally define nanoRT targets more than once. So, hey, if we've already found this once, let's exit out. 
Uh, and then I wrote a little macro here um, that basically just respects if we found, if we're, if we're doing fine package nano RT quiet, uh, whenever you see uh, this, it's just a message command that doesn't happen if quiet was specified on fine package nano RT. That's all that is. Cool, so let's get to it. First, there's a there's a core target. And so um, the backends to nano RT are, are C++ 11 threads or OpenMP. And with the, the core is you just want to use the header uh, with without any of the extra fancy stuff turned on. And so it ends up being a single interface target that has just the path to the nano RT header. Pretty simple. Um, then you'll see with the C++11 threads and OpenMP targets, you'll see that I actually did find package. Now, the reason here is if we fail to find threads or OpenMP, it's still valid to have found nano RT core because uh, the header doesn't require them to be used. So I actually do find package threads and OpenMP quiet because um, even if nano RT was not specified with find package required, the only thing we're going to do if we can't find threads is just not define the nano RT threads target. Uh, this is extra target that adds some extra things. And same thing with OpenMP. Um, so it's not fatal to not have these. Um, so find dependency would, would end up failing to find nano RT. We just want to not do some extra stuff. I actually print a, nor a warning here to say, hey, um, the C++11 threading target's not available or the OpenMP target's not available, um, but it is still valid to find nano RT. So what do these targets do? Um, this uh, expresses we need C++11 because nano RT, I think is C++03 or even 98 compatible. And so uh, if you enable the threading backend with C++11 threads, we need to make sure at least C++11 makes it on the command line. We do that with target compile features um, on this target. The same thing with target link libraries, uh, very similar to TinyTS. Uh, we need uh, the underlying threading library like pthreads to be on the link line. Uh, and then um, if you link this, we wanna also make sure that the core, so that one path to <laughs> the nano RT header, so you just basically need those two things, those two targets linked. And then there's some preprocessor variables also that they come into being. Um, and so that's it. When you link this target in RT threads, you get all this stuff all in one. Uh, all of these things are kind of a pain if you have to specify them manually. So the point of this config is that you don't want to have to include nano RT or remember to define those things and have linked the right libraries. You can just link this target and it works. Same thing is true with OpenMP. Kind of similar preprocessor definition. We add the OpenMP target to the link line, uh, and it just works. And the last target, uh, it's this core, just generic nano RT target. What it is, is it it is an interface to the the most parallel <laughs> version of nano RT that's available. So if we were able to get the OpenMP target defined, then this nano RT target is just an interface to it. Uh, we fall back to trying threads for able to, maybe, maybe we don't have access to OpenMP, but we do have access to C++11 threads. Instead, we use that. Uh, and if both of those fail, this at least works uh, with the core. So you can at least use the header itself. And that's it. It, it kind of looks like a lot, but this is actually doing a lot of convenient things wrapped up into one. Uh, so users don't have to repeat this all over and every single downstream CMake project, uh, we want to do this once, export it by NanoRT. And also, if NanoRT gets another backend or gets more features, more preprocessor definitions, more fancy things, uh, this is the place to, to make sure everyone downstream can consume that. Uh, and so just like with TinyTS, um, building the CMake list of this project itself is just to build some examples. Um, so find package NanoRT, and I'll go and find an example I use this in, like this little path tracer, and that's it. We kind of link the best nano RT target we have, and away you go. And that's it. It can be that simple to create a find package config for your project, so downstream CMake projects can consume your header-only library. Now, I started with header-only libraries, simple configs like this, because it serves as a basis for at least one more future video to look into deeper uh, configs that maybe we pre-generate with CMake, um, include exported targets that get installed, 
this topic can balloon up quite a bit. So this will start serve as a starting place, and then we can move on to much bigger configs uh, for larger, more complicated projects. But again, keeping that complexity under control because we want CMake working for us and not against us. If you like this video, make sure you hit like and please subscribe. And let me know down in the comments what other topics you want to hear about. It's been cool to hear from some of you so far, and uh, I really enjoy doing this, and I really hope that you find it helpful. And until next time, happy coding.